Welcome back to my channel. In this video we're going to take a closer look at current mobster Leonard Lenny Di Maria. Di Maria was born in the province of Potenza to Italian immigrants from Moliterno. He was employed by the New York and Atlantic Railway and served as a railroad conductor for the Long Island Railroad before to turning to a life of crime. He was dubbed the conductor for his early positions. During a wedding, Della Croce spoke to Gambino Captain Fat Andy about Nicholas Carrazzo becoming a full member of the Gambino family. Fat Andy was happy with the recommendation, but he also wanted Lenny Di Maria straighten out as a favor for Carrazzo. It was important for Nicholas Carrazzo to have his right-hand man become a member also. Di Maria joined the Gambino crime family as a soldier at the beginning of the 1980s. Things quickly go left when Di Maria was involved in a racketeering case with John Gotti, Tony Rampino, Nicholas Carrazzo, John Carniglia, and Willie Boy Johnson, who refused to turn state's evidence despite being revealed as an informant. They exonerated all defendants of all counts on March 13, 1987. Leonard Di Maria struggled with his temper often. When the police mistreated Di Maria in the past, he used to get really upset. Di Maria once fought up a detective because he thought the man was treating him unfairly. The fact that one of their own detectives was attacked infuriated the police. Although they weren't going to file charges, the police department still wanted to settle the score. Di Maria makes the decision to go into hiding after realizing he was in a difficult situation. A few weeks later, Di Maria informed the police that he would report himself for assault, but only if Detective John Gurney could get him taken into custody. Detective Gurney was a by-the-book detective, which is why Di Maria chose him. After Detective Gurney arrested Di Maria, the mobster was able to be released without a scratch. Di Maria felt he owed the detective a favor, but what Di Maria really wanted to use the detective for information. The detective wanted to squeeze information out of Di Maria, but the conductor wasn't having it. Gambino captains Anthony Tony Pep Trenacosta, Ralph Davino Jr., and Anthony Ruggiano Jr., along with Di Maria, began working in Florida in 1995 on behalf of Carrazzo. This elite squad of gangsters were called the South Florida Crew. The group belonged to Nicholas Carrazzo. Due to allegations of loan sharking and racketeering in Florida, Di Maria was taken into custody in his Flatlands, Brooklyn residence on December 18, 1996. Following a three-year FBI investigation, Di Maria was charged with separate counts of loan sharking and racketeering in New York, a month after being released on bond. Evidence obtained at the Portobello Soccer Club in Canarsie, Brooklyn, served as a basis for some of the New York indictments. The club was actually a sting operation wherein it bought counterfeit products, computers, and designer clothes from Gambino Mafia figures. According to reports, Di Maria made friends with the FBI undercover agent who oversaw the sting and was captured on camera giving him a hug. Di Maria entered a guilty plea to 15 New York charges on November 3, 1997, which included loan sharking, extortion, and racketeering, and was sentenced to 10 years in Cumberland, Maryland's prison system. A few months later, he entered another guilty plea on the Florida charges in January 1998. After serving his time in jail, Di Maria was allowed to go back to managing Carrazzo and John Jackie Nose D'Amico's loan sharking and racketeering activities in South Florida, Queens, and Brooklyn. Di Maria was elevating in the Gambino family, with talks of Lenny becoming an underboss. The Gambino family was still on the FBI's radar. Di Maria was charged in February 2008 as part of the extensive federal probe into the Gambino family known as Operation Old Bridge. On June 4, 2008, Di Maria entered a guilty plea to allegations of extortion and racketeering. Di Maria also acknowledged planning to extort contractor and truck driver Joseph Vollaro of his money. During a three-year period, Vollaro, a former associate of the Mafia, recorded talks with other mobsters in order to protect himself from punishment. Di Maria spent his time behind bars in the Federal Correctional Institution in Otisville. Lenny gets back to business. While in prison, Di Maria continued to run his lone sharking operation. After doing his time with fellow mobsters like Sonny Franzese and Fat Andy, on August 31, 2012, Lenny was released from prison. After serving several years behind bars, Lenny emerged with a determination to keep a lower profile, to evade the prying eyes of law enforcement that had hounded him in the past. It was the early 2010s, the crime families and technology had advanced since his last days of freedom. Lenny recognized the need to adapt, to stay ahead of the game. To maintain his loan sharking operation, Lenny embraced a new era of discretion. Lenny also understood the importance of leveraging technology to his advantage. In an age of electronic surveillance, he implemented encrypted communication channels and secure networks to coordinate his operations. His loan sharking activities were carefully disguised, operating under the cover of seemingly legitimate businesses. Lenny invested in fronts ranging from laundromats to pizzerias to laundry his money. Knowing the value of loyalty, Lenny surrounded himself with a tight-knit circle of trusted associates like Nick Carrazzo. Their shared history created an unspoken code of silence, 
a brotherhood that Lenny knew he could rely on. As the years passed, the conductor continued to thrive in the shadows, rising in the Gambino ranks. Law enforcement agencies may have evolved, but so did he. With a calculated blend of tradition and innovation, Leonard Di Maria remained a formidable force in the underworld, his reputation echoing through the dimly lit streets of Brooklyn and beyond. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more character breakdowns and analysis of your favorite gangsters. See you in the next one.